All right, so we're going to work with variation, and the first type of variation we're going to do is a direct variation. When you see y varies directly as x, it's also considered directly proportional, and it's characterized by this type of equation. Uh, as the value of x increases, the value of y increases. As the value of x decreases, the value of y decreases. We're going to look at a um, particular example next. The weight of an object on Earth varies directly, so a keyword right here varies directly as the weight of the same object on the moon. Okay, so if I was to write, consider in my equation above, k, y equals kx, if I made it match this one, it would be Earth is equal to k times m. Our k is our constant term, and that's what's going to be consistent. These variables, the y and the k, we usually change those depending on the, the equation, like this one's Earth and weight of the moon. So I used E and M, but they'll usually be reflective. It mirrors this format. Um, and so the next thing we say, a 300-pound object would weigh 48 pounds on the moon. So 300-pound object on the Earth. So I'm going to say 300-pound on the Earth would weigh 48 pounds on the moon. So for the moon, I'm going to put 48. The K is what we do not know. And in these problems, you want to always solve for K. So the first thing we're going to do is solve for K. Uh, you're going to divide both sides by 48. And then that would reduce to 25 fourths. OK. Now, our first step is to always find our k, and then we're going to come back and we're going to write this equation again over here, e equals km, because now we're going to solve for the missing part. All right, so our first step, figure out what k is. Second step, write this. I'm going to go ahead and plug in k. My k is 25 fourths. Okay, and now I'm going to read my last sentence. How much would a 65 pound object weigh on the moon? So we want to know how much a 65 pound object would weigh on the moon. The moon is the thing in question. So we believe m is the thing that we're going to solve for, the variable. So if we're just solving for a variable, if you have a fraction times a variable, the way you solve that is to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal would be 4 over 25. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Okay, so this would cancel this, 25 would cancel that, and we're left with the weight of the moon, and that's what we're looking for. So over here, we want to simplify that, put this over 1, um, and then you would do uh, 4 times 65 over 25, which is just going to reduce to 52 fifths, or you would have 10 pounds, 10.4 pounds, excuse me, so if you divided that fraction out. So we would say the object of the weight on the moon would be 10.4 pounds. Okay, from, from the last question, the 4 times 65 is 260 over 25. I know I jumped right to the reduced fraction of that, but uh, if you needed that intermediate step in between, there it is. The next one we're going to look at is if y varies directly as x, this tells me that I'm going to be working with the format y equals kx. And the next thing we want to fill in this value and this value to determine what k is. So they tell me x is 9, and they tell me y is 15. And so we're going to always solve for k. If they multiply by 9, we're going to divide both sides by 9. So we get 15 ninths is equal to our k. Now we said we would always write our equation over again and go ahead and plug in our k this time. So we know k is 15 ninths. And then we read the rest of the problem to figure out what's next. It says find y. So I know I'm looking for y when x is 33. Okay, so I can put 33 over 1, and then we can um, multiply this out. 
divide this by 3 and you get 3. Divide this by 3, you get 11. And then 15 times 11 is 165 over 3. Divide that out and you get... And so this simplifies to 55. So y equals 55. This is probably the most basic and the easiest version of our variation problems that you'll see. They directly tell us exactly what x is, exactly what y is, and we solve for the rest. The next variation one is just going to be to the nth power. It's set up exactly the same, except for you see that our x has an nth power on it. Um, so we'll look at this next problem number three to set it up. First of all, you have y equals kx is the original format, but let me read. C varies directly, this tells us our directly, as the square root of D. So C varies directly, so we have it with our k, square root of D. So instead of a y, we have a c this time. k is always there. And then instead of a x, we have our square root of d. Okay, so we found our equation, and our first step is to always solve for k. So we're going to plug in our first values. They tell me c is 14, so I plug in c. We're always looking for k to start. And they tell me d is square root, uh, is 64, so I plug it in there. What is the square root of 64? Well, that's simply just going to be 8. So what I'm looking at is this, and I'm solving for k, just like I've always done. So divide both sides by 8, and that's going to reduce to divide a 2 out of both of them, and you get 7 fourths is k. Now, we write our equation again, and then we always plug in our k to start. 7 fourths. Then we come back to the problem. It says find C, so I know I'm looking for C, when D is 324. So I have the square root that's already there, and I fill in 324 for D. Let me bring 7 fourths down. The square root of 324 is 18. Okay, and then you can multiply that out. This reduces, if you do reducing, so divide by 2, divide by 2, so 7 times 9 on the top, 7 times 9 will give you 63, and then 2 times 1 on the bottom will give you 2, and we can leave our answer there. You don't necessarily have to turn it into a decimal. All right, so let's try our hand at a word problem. The distance required to stop a car varies directly, okay? Um, the distance varies directly, so I know I'm going to have my k, and then the square of its speed, so that would be speed squared. So we determine our equation, and then now we start substituting in. If 250 feet, which is our distance, is required, we're always looking for k, to stop a car traveling 60 miles per hour. So then that would be 250, 60 squared, which means 60 times 60, is going to be 3,600. Now we're always solving for k this first time, so divide both sides by 3,600. You can reduce those last zeros and then divide by 5, and you would reduce this to 5 over 72. Okay, now once we have our k, we always write our equation again, and we plug in our k. Then we go back up to our problem and see what's left to find. How many feet are required to stop a car traveling 96 miles per hour? So they give us speed. They tell us our speed is 96, and we put it in our formula, and we say, find the distance. Okay, so our distance is going to be 5 over 72 times 96 times 96 is 9,216. Now, I could just put this in my calculator. 5 
times this over and then divide it by 72 and it should simplify to 640 feet and that's going to be your distance.